With us now is the senior economist at Berenberg Bank. He is Christian Schulz. He previously worked at the ECB, and Chris joins us this morning from London. Chris, Chris uh, Christine Lagarde says countries need to work together, but a lot of investors are looking to the ECB to come in and kind of save the day here. Is the European Central Bank key to really solving the financial crisis here? Well, at the moment, it looks as though the ECB's latest action, this three-year liquidity funding operation for the banks, does seem to have a little bit more effect than we might have expected. Uh, the latest auctions here in Europe, where Spain, for instance, sold debt for a very low price, um, were quite successful. So at the moment, it looks pretty good, but uh, the next accident is waiting to happen. We might see ratings downgrades. And in that case, we do need the ECB finally to step up to the the plate and guarantee maximum yields, for instance, for countries. Yeah, you mentioned how the debt auctions out of Spain and Italy this week were fairly decent, yet the euro broke below $1.30, and that, for a lot of people, signaled the next leg of this European crisis. How do you reconcile that? Well, that's the difficulty at the moment. On the one hand side, in the bond markets, it seems that we have a period of improvement, really. We see the yields coming down, we see the good auctions. But on the other hand, we have the, the euro under pressure, and that is worrying because it could mean that uh, investors are really fleeing uh, the eurozone and that this latest uh, period of stability is really just due to domestic banks buying their government's uh, bonds. So this, we have conflicting signals at the moment. and. We'll have to wait probably until January when we have larger auctions to, to see whether this improvement in the bond markets is likely to prevail. Right, to really test it. Now, investors say the ECB's actions of late address liquidity but not insolvency because no one is really willing to put up the money. Is the ECB an institution that can adapt, be flexible, change course relatively quickly? I know you worked there for three years before moving to Berenberg in April. That's true. The ECB has a very clear mandate and uh, it also has a very clear treaty which forbids monetary financing of governments and it has stuck to this line very clearly lately. So it looks unlikely at the moment that they will step in to save governments. But there is one thing that could trigger ECB action and that's if we're heading for a deflationary spiral because the ECB has an inflation target which is 2%. If inflation falls below that and significantly below that, the ECB can act more. And that could mean that they would then resort to measures like quantitative easing or a different type of invention on the government bond markets. So very quickly here, Christian, all options would be on the table should deflation start to pick up. I think that's what the ECB should be looking for. It looks as though they are not willing to act just because of financial stability concerns. So they're not acting because simply governments cannot borrow money anymore. But they would act if we were heading for inflation. That's pretty sure. All right. So the ECB, with its inflation mandate, not able to do much to address insolvency concerns. But if deflation starts to become an issue, the European Central Bank could step in with quantitative easing. Christian Schulz of Berenberg Bank, the senior economist there, thank you so much for joining us.